Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, everybody. It's a blessing to be back with us once again. Hope everybody had a blessed week and a safe week. Amen. Hope everybody went out and and did their civic duty and voted and so forth. And hope everybody had a a wonderful time doing that. Okay. So uh, we want to continue to hold those up in prayer that we ask for every week. Uh, continue to hold up Sister Estella Wilson in a lot of prayer, uh, as well as our sister and Reverend Arnold and all those who are on our prayer and our healing list, as well as our church, our church family, and uh, of course, our pastor. Continue to hold up Pastor Hill uh, in a lot of prayer. Amen? And uh, hold our country up in a lot of prayer and pray for the people and the uh, candidates down there in Georgia uh, as they're about to have a, a runoff on that election down there. So pray for that uh, situation as well. Amen? Okay, without any further ado, let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the privilege to come into your presence. We thank you for blessing us to be here to see another wonderful day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, and we thank you for all the abundant blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you for bringing us through another wonderful year, dear Lord. We just pray that you would continue to bless those we ask for prayer. We ask you to touch them with your healing, love, and power in every way that they stand in need, dear Lord. You know what they need. You know when they need it, dear Lord. And all you have to do is speak a word, and it shall be done. So this we pray in your holy name and for your sake. Amen. All right, church, let us get after it here. Uh, I want you to turn with me, those of you who was with us uh, last week, and you uh, recall where we left off at last week here, and that's what we're going to pick back up on right now. I want you to turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. We want to look at the 24th chapter of Luke, and we want to look at this 18th verse. Now, if you recall last week, that's where we stopped off our lesson at, and we're going to pick back up right here today, amen? dealing with the man who was healed and, uh, and Peter uh, and those who uh, prayed and asked for the healing for this man here. So we're going to pick back up here. Now if you turn to the 18th verse, this 24th chapter of Gospel of Luke. It says, Then the one chosen name Rather, the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Amen. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? What is he talking about here? Well, you see, it was not a group of ignorant pagans with no religious background. Furthermore, the Jewish leaders had indeed uh, perpetrated a great injustice when they arrested and condemned Jesus and added Pilate, and asked Pilate, rather, to have him crucified. Amen? Now, how many citizens agreed with their decision? We do not know that answer. Amen? We don't know how many, you see, citizens agreed with that decision. But we can imagine the remorse of the people when they learned that they had betrayed and killed their own Messiah. Amen. So you see, there must be conviction before a sinner can experience conversion. Are you listening to me? You see, unless, for instance, for less a patient is convinced that he or she is sick. They will never accept the diagnosis or take the treatment. 
Are you hearing me? So Peter, he turned the temp into the temple into a courtroom. He turned the temple into a courtroom here, and he laid all the evidence out for everybody to see. So, so, so how could two ordinary fishermen perform such a great miracle unless God, amen, was with them? So, so you see, nobody would dare, dare, dare deny the miracle because the beggar stood right there before him. All in perfect soundness, as the Bible tells us there in that Acts chapter 3, 16 and Acts 4 and 14. Amen? So, so to accept the miracle would have been to admit that Jesus Christ is indeed the living Son of God and that his name has power. Amen? But watch this. Peter did not leave the people without hope. Amen? He didn't leave them without hope. So, so in fact, he almost seemed to defend them by pointing out that they had acted in ignorance while at the same time they had fulfilled the word of the Lord. Amen? That, that's why I always say, you are never without hope in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. If, if you are a Christian, you are never without hope in Jesus Christ. Now I want you to turn with me and look here in verses 17 and 18 of this third chapter of Acts. L look what it says here. Verse 17 through 18 in the third chapter. Verse 17. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Amen? He has thus fulfilled. In other words, you see, Old Testament law, amen, in Old Testament law, there is a difference between deliberate sin and sin of ignorance. Amen? There is a difference between deliberate sin and sin of ignorance, according to the Leviticus 4 through 5. Amen? And also Numbers 15 and 22 talks about that. You see, so, so the person who sin presumptuously, which means that's a person who fails to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate, okay? So, so, so the person who sins presumptuously was a rebel against God and was guilty of great sin, all right? So, so he was to be cut off. He was to be cut off from his people. Amen? Right there in, in Numbers chapter 15, verse 30 through 31. Which could mean excommunication and even death. Amen? So the defiant, high-handed sinner, watch this closely, was condemned. But the person who sinned unwittingly without deliberate intent, he was given opportunity to repent and seek God's forgiveness, okay? So, so now please, just so we're clear here, ignorance does not remove the sinner's guilt, okay? But it does mitigate the circumstances, amen? So, so Jesus had prayed, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're in Luke chapter 23 and verse 34, all right? And God had answered that prayer, amen? You see, God still answering prayers, church. So don't ever stop praying just because your prayer might not get answered in the time that you think it should, amen? Something is happening whether you can see it or not. God still answer prayer. 
Pray always. The Bible said pray without ceasing. Amen. Pray always. Rejoice. Pray always. Everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Don't never stop praying. Because God is hearing those prayers. Amen. And he knows exactly the right time to answer those prayers. And look what he said. And God had an, and God had answered that prayer. So instead of sending judgment, look what he did. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower his church and to convict lost sinners. You see? So you see, Israel's situation was something like that uh, of the manslayer, okay? Who killed his neighbor without malice intent and fled to the nearest city of refuge. Now let me show you what he's talking about here. Let me, watch this. Here in Numbers 35, let us look at that, at, at a few verses of that, beginning here in verses nine of this 35th chapter of Numbers. Look, look what he says here. Numbers 35, verses nine. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint cities to be cities of refuge. Amen? You see, when you, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you cross the, in, into Jordan, the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint cities to be cities of refuge. That's very important. For you that the manslayer who kills any person accidentally may flee there. All right? That's a refuge for somebody who kills somebody accidentally. They got a place to go for refuge. Now, that, that's something like uh, uh, extradition. Say like if you kill somebody here in the city and then you flee, say to Illinois. Amen. Okay. Well, that's a place of refuge. Amen. Unless you accept uh, extradition to give up your right and then come back to the place where you committed the crime. They can't do nothing to you in the place where you committed the crime because now you're in another jurisdiction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you're in a place of refuge there. Now, I'm not saying eventually you won't have to come back, but, but you, you, can, you can stall that off. Amen? You, you, can, you can refuse to go back to that jurisdiction. Okay? Now, let me finish reading the scripture here for you. In verses 12, he said, They shall be cities of refuge... For you, amen, they should be cities of refuge for you from the avenger, amen, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. So in other words, you see, so long as he remained in the city, he was safe. For then the avenger could not reach him and kill him. Amen. He was free to go home only after the death of the high priest. So, so Peter, Peter invited these murderers to flee by faith to Jesus Christ and find refuge in him. Amen. There is refuge in Christ. Okay. Amen. There is refuge in him. You see, here in Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 18, let me read this to you from my uh, Christian Standard Bible, if you will. Amen? Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 18, where it says, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge 
might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. Now, in his previous sermon here, Peter had explained that the cross was the meeting place of divine sovereignty and human responsibility. That was in his previous sermon over there in Acts chapter 2 and verses 23. Amen? He, he, he said, though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to the cross and kill him. And then he, he repeated this truth in this, in, in, in this second sermon there in Acts chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Amen. And again, I'm going to read it to you again here from my Christian Standard Bible. Look what it says. Where he says, And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your leaders also did. Verse 18. In this way, God fulfilled what he had predicted through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Amen. Now, there are mysteries here that the human mind cannot fully understand. Okay? So we must accept them by faith. We must accept them by faith because the human mind cannot fully understand this, you see. Amen? You see, God had a plan from all eternity, yet his plan did not force men to act against their own will. Amen? So the prophet had foretold the suffering and the death of the Messiah, and the nation fulfilled those prophecies, you see, without realizing what they were doing. Amen? Amen? So when God cannot rule, guess what? He overrules. When he cannot rule, he'll overrule. And he always accomplishes his divine purposes and his decrees. See, so you can't stop God no way you try. If he can't rule, he's going to overrule. Amen? His word is going to always do what it was uh, uh, supposed to do. It's going to always accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. So, so, so you see, now watch this. Having announced the crimes presented in the evidence and explained the nature of the sin, look what Peter did. Peter then offered them pardons. He offered them pardons. Right there, Acts 3.19 through 26. You're, you're not in our, our chapter text. Amen. What a strange thing for for a prosecuting attorney to become the defense attorney and, and, and the pardoning judge. Isn't that, that's a strange thing, amen? You see, Peter's burden was to encourage his people to trust Christ and experience his glory and salvation. Okay? Now, what did he tell them to do? Well, watch what he told me to do. First, first, they had to repent. They had to repent of their sins. That's always, see, that's the, that's the first thing in, in, in being saved, in your eternal salvation. You have to repent. Repent from your sins. Amen. You see, Turn, that means to turn away from your sins. That means to go a different direction, have a different mindset about it, have a different mindset about your sins and your, and, and your Lord. Amen? You see, that's the first step, is repent. You first got to repent, you see? So, what did he tell them to do? First, repent from your sins. Watch what he told me. Go with me again to, to this uh, second chapter of Acts. We're going to look at verses 38. Acts 2, 38. Just for a moment. Look what he says. 
Acts 2.38. Still reading from a Christian standard Bible church. This. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And you will receive the gift of... Now, as I just indicated, repent means to turn around, turn over a new leaf, have a change of mind, amen, about yourselves, about, about your sin, and about Jesus Christ. Amen? Acts 5 and 31 in the NIV says, God exalted him to his own right hand a prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. Amen? And forgive their sins. Let me, let me just give you one more scripture. Would you do that? Look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. I'm reading from the NIV now. Okay? This is from the NIV. Acts chapter 17 in verse 30, this is what it says. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Amen? People everywhere to repent. You see? which means to have a change of mind. Amen? A change of mind of themselves, their sins, and Jesus Christ. You see, repentance is much more than feeling sorry for your sins. As the, as the little Sunday school girl once said, it means feeling sorry enough to quit. It means being sorry enough to quit. Amen? You see, false sorrow for sins could be merely regret, which means that I'm just really, I'm sorry I got caught. Amen? I'm just, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry I got caught. Not because I am truly sorry from my heart. That's not godly sorrow. Amen? Our remorse, you see, or remorse, I, I feel terrible. That's what more. I feel terrible. And such feelings have a tendency to pass away. Amen. I, I might feel sorry or I might feel remorse right now, but after a while, it dissipates. It goes away. Amen. Now, just so we're clear, repentance is not the same as penance. Okay? Repentance is not the same as penance as though we have to make special sacrifice to God to prove that we are sincere, okay? Now, true repentance, true repentance is admitting that what God says is true. That's true repentance. And because it is true, to change our mind about our sins, amen? See, you, you, you got you to gotta say what God says. You can agree with what God, if God says it's sin and, and he calls it sin, don't try to shape it to make it sound like what you want to say. Just agree with God. If God says it's sin, it's sin. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. There is no uh, 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 gray areas in the Bible. It's black and white. Amen? Whatever God says, that's what it is. Okay? You see, you see, the message was not new to the Jews. You see, for John the Baptist had preached it, and so had Jesus. Oh, over there in, in Matthew chapter 3 and verses 2 and, and, and Matthew chapter 4 and, and 17. You see, amen? So, so in one sense, repentance is a gift from God. In one sense, it's a, repent, it's, a, it's a gift from God. There in Acts chapter 11 and uh, verse 18, 
The King James reads it this way. It says, when they heard these things, they had held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. But in another sense, it is the heart's response to the convicting ministry of the Spirit of God. Amen. And then in, in Acts uh, 26 and 20, where he says, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Acts 2, 26 and 20. So in other words, you see, the person who sincerely repents, who sincerely repents, will have little problem putting his faith in God. Amen? A person who sincerely repents will have little faith. Amen? Little problem putting their faith in God. Now the second thing I want to share is this. They had to be converted. Amen? Which means to turn again and exercise saving faith in Jesus Christ. So, so the biblical message is repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ according to Acts 20, 20 21. Okay? And, and, and the two go together. Amen? Just like ice cream and apple pie. They go together. Amen? You see, unless we turn from our sins, we cannot put saving faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. So it is unfortunate that, that, that some, and I, so when I say unfortunate, I really mean it's unfortunate, that some preachers have so ignore the doctrine of repentance that their converts lack the sense of conviction of sin. Amen? You know, some people just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. No matter how much you talk about sin, no matter how much you talk about repentance, no matter how much you talk about forgiveness, they keep doing the same thing over and over again. Amen? They have no sense of conviction of sin because they have really been taught, amen, you see, the process of, re of, of a repentance. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now watch this. Balanced evangelism presents to the sinner both repentance and faith. I said balanced evangelism. All right? Now Peter announced what would happen if they repent. Look what he says. He says, and turn to Jesus Christ in order that your sins may be blotted out. That's what will happen if you repent and ask for forgiveness. Jesus said he will blot out your sins. He throw them in the sea of forgiveness, never to remember them again. Amen? In, in, in order that the times of refreshing, he said, may come from the presence of the Lord. So, so in order that he may send Jesus Christ, that's the literal translation. Amen. There was a promise for the individual. Amen. Sins forgiven. And a promise for the nation. Times of spiritual refreshing. You see. So Peter was actually calling for national repentance here. He said, for the nation through its leaders and denied its Messiah and condemned him to die. So the declaration is that if the nation repented, 
and believe, then the Messiah would return and establish the promised kingdom. Amen? So the nation did not repent. And certainly God knew this would happen. Amen? He knew it. So the message here is eventually moved from the Jews, amen, to the Samaritans. Amen? Over there in Acts 11. And to the Gentiles as well. There in Acts chapter 10. You just write those down and read those and you see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the emphasis in Acts 3, 22 through 25, which we covered in a lot of detail, if you've been following along with me. Amen? You see, when we were in, in that particular chapter. Now, okay, now, it is on the prophets who had announced the coming of the Messiah. Peter quoted from Moses there in Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15, as well as chapter, I mean, verses 18 through 19. And I think that's what we're going to leave that for right now. And then we'll come back next week and we'll, we'll pick back up there, okay? We'll pick right back up here in Deuteronomy, chapter 18 verse 15, as well as verses uh, 18 and 19. So that's where we're going to break it off. That's where we're going to come back next week. We'll pick it up there, okay? All right, may God bless you. I hope this is making sense to us. And I hope you really just follow along with us, all right? So now I want you to continue to pray for those now whom we've asked for prayer. Amen. I want you to also uh, pray for... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Brother Cole's family, you know, uh, Pastor announced that uh, Brother Cole went home to be with the Lord now. Uh, many of you have heard him talk about Cole for uh, a lot of time because he was somebody whom Pastor had known for an awful long time that did an awful lot of, a lot of work for Pastor. And uh, he was a really great person. So we want to continue to pray for his family as well. Amen? So pray for those we've asked for prayer on our prayer and our healing list. Okay, now as I always say, we never like to close our uh, lessons out without someone who might be listening to us who don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Now we all need to be saved. Everybody needs a Savior because when we leave this world, we have to have somewhere to go and there's only two locations. There either there's heaven or there's hell. Amen. You can make your choice right now as to which one you want to go to. All you have to do is say, Lord, confess with your mouth that, that you are a sinner and that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he went to the cross and he died for your sins. Amen? And then you ask him, say, Lord, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Okay? And if you say a prayer like that and you really mean it, really mean it, and then get baptized. See, baptism is just publicly identifying that you are a Christian, and that you are uh, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's all baptism, and baptism does not save you. It publicly identifies you, amen, with Jesus Christ, okay? So, so if you are listening and you know that you're not saved, I wouldn't put that on, because one day we're going to leave this world and lead somewhere to go, amen? And as I said, there's only two locations, so you have to choose right now, amen? Okay, God bless you. May God keep you and may his face shine upon you. Have a blessed week, safe week, and come back with me next week and let us finish unpacking this. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for the privilege to come into your presence. Thank you for what you've shown us in your word today. We just pray that you would uh, let it illuminate our minds, dear Lord, and let us have a spirit uh, to use it and use it all for your glory, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, to understand the things that we don't understand. Because you tell us in James 1 and 5, if you like wisdom, let it ask of God and he will give it to you. Amen. Unapproachable. So just ask God and he'll give you exactly what you need. So we just thank you, Father, for the privilege. So bless us now as we leave here today and bless us to come back again next week at the next point of hour. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. 
God bless you. God keep you. Have a blessed week. I'll talk to you next week. Amen.